implies. I would like to ask you about the development of this uh, notion of uh, extraditing Jair Klein to Colombia. I think. Is what? Uh, extraditing Jair Klein to Colombia. Jair Klein was uh, caught in Russia. He stayed there for three years. And he was finally released as uh, uh, a Strasbourg uh, uh, decision not to extradite him to Colombia. He's, um, he's a, a criminal. He's, uh, he went to Colombia and trained uh, the drug cartels and the drug uh, lords. He worked for them, uh, empowered them, helped them organize, uh, taught them all kinds of uh, warfare instruments, how to kill, how to put bombs in, in planes, how to, uh, how to kill uh, very important leaders in our country. Uh, we were discussing about the, the legitimation of, 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 uh, of Israel, and we were discussing how things of this ma matter can produce a worse decision and consequence than anything else. I know there are legal, legal procedures going on uh, about this matter and that you have to resolve. The Colombian government has asked um, the Israeli government to just to decide what to do and put this decision in a, in a district court uh, decision to, to proceed with that. Uh, we are worried because the, the lawyers of, of Mr. Klein saying that the simple delay will take an, an, an impact. It means that it's going to be very difficult. And we are especially worried um, about this notion that Israel doesn't extradite Jews. That uh, in terms of, uh, the, because uh, somehow that the fact that someone is a Jew and a criminal should produce some sort of solidarity from the, from the part of us. I think I lost that a long time ago, but I would like you to, to tell us more or less what is the situation, uh, how, how would you see this proceeding, and how this uh, can be solved in, in the best way, uh, respecting justice and uh, legal procedure, but also in terms of making, making justice. Thank you very much. As I told you when you referred to me when I entered the room, I'm not familiar with the facts. I told you, please send me an email and I'll address to it as soon as possible. I, am, I have a rule on facts which I don't know. I usually do not express opinions. Thank you very much. But send me an email and I'll give you my card and I'll address to it. Ambassador uh, Mordechai Paltzer has a question again. Well, <coughs> uh, uh, I am a retired ambassador. And uh, now for the time being, I, I... I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Please speak more directly to the microphone. Well, I am a retired ambassador, not an ambassador today. And today I am the chairman of the World of the World Jewish Congress Institute. And uh, I have a, a proposal that uh, might terminate once forever the discussion whether we are or we are not a Jewish state. And uh, my proposal is just to change the name, the official name of the state, in state of State of Israel, that it will be the Jewish state of Israel. And then nobody will have any doubt that we are a Jewish state, and we, of course, know that it is a Jewish state. And any ambassador who will come here, his credentials will be addressed to the president of the Jewish state of Israel. And we know that the different countries are calling themselves in on different ways, uh, People's Republic uh, or uh, social, Socialist Republic or so on. So we should our, be the Jewish state of Israel. I, our basic law says that we are a Jewish and a democratic state. I want to make it very clear. 
The fact that we are called Medinat Israel, which was the name which David Ben-Gurion, who was the founder of the State of Israel, uh, recommended, I think was right. Because Israel is the name, the second name of our forefather, Yaakov Avinu. By the name, my personal name is Yaakov Israel also. So I'm again in conflict of interest. But uh, we have also minority groups here in Israel. And I think the name Medinat Israel is a very right and very thoughtful and meaningful name for the state of Israel as a Jewish state. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mrs. Diana Berger from the United Kingdom. Oh, at least there is one lady. I already was in a position where we do not observe the right of equal rights. Thank you. There are a few women around the table. I'm Luciana Burge. I'm a member of parliament uh, in the UK. Um, my question is about a case which often appears in our British press. Um, it's about Mordechai Vanunu. Um, you'll know. Can you hear me? Yes. It, yeah, I, yeah. Forgive me. Um, the case about Mordechai Vanunu, which is often in our British press. Again, I, I am not in the position to, call, to talk about a case which was dealt in the Israeli courts for many years, and there is a decision of the courts. I am not a, a, a pallet division, and I can only say that whatever the Israeli courts decided is right and should be observed and implemented. That's the rule of law. And I, as a, not only as a minister of justice, but as a resident, as a state of Israel, I was born here, we should observe the rule of law and the basic principle of the rule of law is that we have to respect the Israeli court's decisions. Thank you. Another lady there. Yes, <clears throat> Anita Lowy, Congresswoman from the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm on. Thank you, Mr. Minister, for appearing here today. We've been talking a great deal about the unity of the Jewish people. And in the United States and elsewhere, a major issue has been, who is a Jew? My husband and I were married by an Orthodox rabbi. My children were married by a conservative rabbi. In the United States, as you know, we have Orthodox, conservative, and reform. Can you discuss with us this issue, which gets many people very concerned, which is the understatement of the year. Who is making the law? Where does it stand? Who is a Jew in Israel? I would first of all say very clearly, the problem in the United States is not who is a Jew. The problem is those who leave the Jewish nation, assimilation. And therefore, in the United States, everybody who declares himself as a Jew and belongs to a Jewish community, whether it's this type or the other type, that's not a problem. He's Jewish. The problem in Israel is a different one. And I spoke about it just last week in the Israeli president conference, we have here a situation that hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants came to Israel, mainly from African countries. And under the law of return in Israel, a Jew can be automatically a, not only a resident, but a citizen, and vote, and become member of the Knesset, the parliament, the member of the cabinet, member of the uh, everything, and uh, he's a full citizen, full rights. 
And therefore, we need for conversion a unified system of conversion because it creates legal rights. It's not a question to which congregation you belong, conservative, reform, this way. Orthodox has also many, many types in its, in its uh, uh, organization. By us, it's a legal question because you are entitled to become immediately a citizen. And if the three of us can sit down and decide that we convert somebody who just immigrated and left across the border and he becomes a citizen, that's not a way to do it. It is legal consequences. And therefore, and I headed the com committee of dealing with the question of conversion in 1997 and 1998, and we reached an understanding which was not implemented. I am speaking again tomorrow on this issue in the joint, uh, uh, there is a, a joint here in Israel institution of how to teach what the Jewish tradition is, where the conservative, reform, and orthodox are under one roof. I think we should unite and I started my comments at the, my preliminary words, the main problem of the Jewish nation that we have to unite and stop arguing. Everybody should pray to God the way he wants or the way he wishes. I hope I've answered you. You're very, very, uh, I would say, uh, Very important question. Thank you. John Dyker, Secretary General, the World Jewish Congress. Congress. Yeah, sorry. Dan Dyker, Secretary General, World Jewish Congress. <clears throat> Minister Neyman, following your comment now about the importance of Jewish unity on the most critical issues facing the Jewish people and the nation state of the Jewish people, I would like to say that I think Israel, the Israeli governments have done a great disservice to the notion of Jewish unity when it comes to the whole issue of what rights Israel and the Jewish people really have in, in their territory. And what I mean to say is that over the last six governments, there have been six different policies regarding rights to territory in the context of diplomatic negotiations. And I'm going to make reference, oh, Mr. The Chairman Ackerman is not here, but I think what lied behind Chairman Ackerman's question is the issue of Jewish rights in Israel. And what I mean to say specifically is that in the year 2000, and in the, uh, under Mr. Barak, when Israel made offers that it had never made in any government since the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, and in the preclusion of Israel's rights in Gaza in 2005, and then again Israel made another set of, of some would say, breathtaking territorial offers, and the issue of rights never really came up. And so what, what has happened in the international community, in the Jewish community, and in the larger community, is that people are I think to put it mildly, completely confused about what are the underlying rights of the Jewish people and in the state of Israel re with regard to the territories under dispute. So that when Chairman Ackerman talks about the 67 <coughs> lines with great facility, as many people, as the President of the United States did, they are unaware of <coughs> the, what underpins that discussion on the level of rights in Israel which is why when, when Prime Minister Netanyahu talked about defensible borders and not going back to 67 lines, it created a, an uproar, an uproar in the international community. So I ask you, Mr. Minister, what is Israel's legal position with regard to its rights in the disputed areas of what Israel calls Judea and, Sam excuse me, Judea and Samaria and what the rest of the world calls the former West Bank of Jordan? 
uh, with all due respect, that's not which is the be a war, which does not allow peace with the Arabs and with the Palestinians. We are a democratic country. And in a democratic country, there are different views, and the majority decides. There are in Israel those who believe that you should go back to the 1948. Those who believe that they should go to the 1967. Those who believe we should be this borders or the other borders. Once the question will be at the stage where we have to decide, we will decide according to democratic rules by the majority. There is also a law which was passed by the Knesset that will be a referendum. You have to understand in the democratic country, especially by Jews, there are different opinions. Our Gemara says, the same way that God created everybody in the world, billions of people, nobody has the same face. So nobody has the same opinion also. We are in a dialogue between ourselves, between the very extreme on this side, very extreme on this side. I purposely do not say left or right, Professor Acton, the late Professor Acton, who was the one greatest the professors on, the, on political issues, taught me that right and left, it depends which side you stay. Sometimes you are this side, sometimes you are the other side, and it changes. We will sit down and according to the democratic rules and decide, but we have first to negotiate with to whom we to negotiate, to sit on the table, and that's what I stressed before very clearly. Once we will have to sit on the table, we'll make the decision. And uh, as a former uh, lawyer, you never say to the other party what your end line is before the negotiations. I would say in a very, very unpolitical way. It's stupid. Not it's not unrational. It's stupid. You do not declare what your position is, your end position, before you enter the room of negotiations. I taught many years contracts in the university, and I know how to negotiate. I hope so, at least. Any other questions? Okay, I want to thank Justice Minister Naman for being with us.